Let's now look at some examples of critical points of functions of two variables. Our first example will be to find the critical points of the function f of xy equals e to the minus x squared minus y squared. Now since we haven't specified a domain, the default is the domain is the set of all xy for which the function is defined. In this case, that's the whole plane. Now a critical point is a point where both the partial derivatives vanish. So let's calculate the partial derivatives. We have fx equals minus 2x e to the minus x squared minus y squared. And fy equals minus 2y e to the minus x squared minus y squared. So fx is 0 if and only if x is equal to 0 because the exponential function never vanishes. And likewise, fy is equal to 0 if and only if y is equal to 0. So there's one critical point which is the origin. Now is this a local minimum, a local maximum, or neither? Well, if we look at the function, it's e to the minus the distance squared from the origin. At the origin, f is equal to 1. And at any point other than the origin, f is e to something negative, which is less than 1. So this is a global max. And let's sketch the graph of f. So it's got a maximum at the origin, and it rapidly decays as we go away from the origin. And it's also symmetric with respect to rotation around the z-axis. So we can sort of draw it like that. Okay, our next example will be to find the critical points of f of xy equals y squared minus x squared. So fx equals minus 2x and fy equals 2y. So again, fx equals 0 if and only if x equals 0. And fy equals 0 if and only if y equals 0. So there's just one critical point which is the origin. Now is this a local minimum, a local maximum, or neither? Well, if we draw the graph, this is once again the infamous hyperbolic paraboloid. So, um, sorry, this should be x and, and the other one should be y. So it goes up in the y direction and down in the x direction. At the origin, if we start at the origin, if we move a little bit in the y direction, then the function goes up. While if we move a little bit in the x direction, sorry about my bad picture, so this is an x. If we move a little bit in the x direction, the function goes down. So this is neither a local minimum nor a local maximum. So this particular kind of critical point, it's what's called a saddle point. I'll define later what the definition of a saddle point is. Okay. Now let's look at a slightly more complicated example. So let's find the critical points of f of xy equals x squared times y squared times e to the minus x squared minus y squared. 
So fx is, so when I differentiate this x squared, I get 2x y squared, e to the minus x squared minus y squared. And then when I differentiate the, differentiate the exponential, I get a minus 2x cubed, because I have to multiply this by minus 2x, um, y squared e to the minus x squared minus y squared. And we can factor this. So we have a, a 2xy squared over here. And then here 2xy squared is multiplied by 1. Here's multiplied by minus x squared. So I have 1 minus x squared. And then that's all multiplied by e to the minus x squared minus y squared. And fy, well, it's symmetric with respect to x and y, so we just have to switch x and y everywhere. So we get 2x squared y, 1 minus y squared, e to the minus x squared minus y squared. So where are these both equal to 0? Um, so first of all, if... Um, So fx and fy are both divisible by x. So if x is 0 and y equals anything, then that's a critical point. So we have a whole line of critical points. And second, if y equals 0 and x is anything, because these are both divisible by y. Now, if we consider where neither x nor y is equal to 0, then the 2xy squared or 2x squared y doesn't vanish and the exponential function doesn't vanish. So the only way we can have a critical point is if both 1 minus x squared vanish is and also 1 minus y squared vanishes. So the remaining possibility is that x equals plus or minus 1 and y equals plus or minus 1, where this plus or minus doesn't have to be the same as that one. So this is four isolated points. So if I draw the picture, of the plane. So the set of critical points, I'll draw it in red here, it consists of the entire x-axis, the entire y-axis, and then four additional points. So 1, 1, 1 minus 1, minus 1, 1, and minus 1, minus 1. And what does the graph look like? Are these local minima or local maximum or what? Well, let me draw a kind of crude sketch here. So away from the origin, this function is going to be positive but very close to zero because we're going to have e to something pretty negative, and this is going to be a very, 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 very small positive number, which is going to sort of swamp these x, this x squared y squared. So it'll be positive and very small. Um, on the axes, the function is equal to 0. And then it has some humps at x and y equal plus or minus 1. So it has little humps like this. So one can check that um, these points, well actually we can just see this right away. So the axes, f is equal to 0, and everywhere else, f is positive. So these are global minima. We have a whole bunch of them. And with a little more work, you can check that these are global maxima. But I won't explain that right now. Anyway, this is just an example to show that the set of critical points can be quite complicated.